Okay. If I said to you, 3 plus what is equal to 7? 4. So you have to put a 4 in the box. A box, what minus 5 is equal to 10? 15, very good. 2 times what is equal to 20? 10. Well, instead of using boxes in what, what we're going to do actually rewrite this problem a little bit differently. We're going to be using what we call variables. So this problem will be written as 3 plus x equals 7. And now you have to solve it for x. 3 plus what is 7? So in this case, x will be, we said what, 4? This one will be x minus 5 equals 10. And we just said x will have to be what, 15 here? 15 minus 5 is 10. 2 times x is equal to 20. And we said here x is equal to 10. When you look at these problems, I don't need any like rules to solve them. I can look at them and tell you what the answer. But what happens when you start giving some ugly problems like this? 1 half times x plus 3 minus 5x equals 7 plus 2 times x minus 4. There is no way you're going to look at that and say the answer is 3. You can't just look at it. So we need to come up with some guideline. How do we solve these equations, linear equations? What is the process? And that's really what today's topic. How do we solve linear equations? Again, these are straightforward. We're still going to show you the rules for them. Here we go. We'll begin with a problem like this. X plus 5 equals 8. You have plus 5. What is the opposite to addition? Subtraction. So what I'm going to do, see my goal here, let me put that. My goal when I'm solving these equations, that's always my goal, is I want all the x's on one side, doesn't matter which side, and I want all the numbers on the other side. That's what my goal is. That means that plus 5 is on the wrong side. To get that plus 5 to go to that side, I will need to subtract 5 from this side. If I subtract 5 from this side, i got to subtract 5 from that side. x equals what? What's 8 minus 5? 3. Three. So when you have addition, you subtract. If I have t plus 4 equals 9. That's a plus 4. To cancel that, what do we do? Subtract 4 from both sides. t equals what? What's 9 minus 4? 5. Seven plus y equals thirteen. Remember, that's really the same as y plus seven equals thirteen. That's the commutative property of addition. When you're adding two numbers or two things, it doesn't matter which one you write first. So that's the same as this. You have a plus seven. What's the opposite to plus seven? negative 7 from both sides. y equals 13 minus 7, which is what? 6. So when you have addition, we subtract. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. What about when you have subtractions then? What do you do? When you have subtractions, like y minus 9 equals 10. 
To cancel the negative 9, you need to add. When you have subtractions, you add. What's minus 9 plus 9? Gone. Y equals 10 plus 9, which is 19. M minus 1 half is equal to 1 third. Since you like fractions, let's throw them in. M minus 1 half equals 1 third. That's the subtractions. So what do we do when you have subtractions? We add. M equals what? 1 third plus 1 half. Now let's go back to pre-algebra. How do you add fractions? What do you need? Which is in this case what? Six, very good. So I have to multiply the three by what to make it six? Two. That'll be two over six. I gotta multiply the two by what to make it six? Three. So M equals, since the bottom is the same, what is 2 plus 3? 5 over 6. Notice the rule doesn't change just because the number is a whole number or, I mean, the equation with the numbers are fractions here. We don't change the rules. And the same thing if you're at decimals. If I have m minus 2.4 equals 3.75. Subtractions, the opposite to that, we add 2.4. And if you remember again from pre-algebra, when you're adding decimal numbers, that's chapter 3 in pre-algebra, the key is to line up the decimal points. 5 plus nothing is 5. 7 plus 4, 11. There's your decimal point. 1 and 3, 4. 4 and 2, 6. 6.15. Now, instead of adding and subtracting, when I have addition and subtraction, instead of adding and subtracting numbers, I tend to use a different method, especially when the problem gets really big and you want to move things around clean quickly. And the method I use is called change side. It's only for addition and subtraction. Change side, change sign. Change side, change sign. What does that mean? Let me go back to some of these problems we just did. We did x minus 5 equals 10. We said my goal is to make sure all the x's on one side, all the numbers on the opposite side. So I'm going to take that minus 5 because on the wrong side and move it right there. This is negative 5. When I change side, I'm going to change the sign of the number I'm moving. So this becomes x equals what? 10 instead of negative 5 becomes what? Positive 5. What's 10 plus 5? <coughs> 15. If I have y plus 3 equals 20, I want to isolate the y on one side by itself. The plus 3, I can move it there, and this way I'll have all the numbers on one side, all the variables, all the x's, the y's on the other side. Change side, change sign. Take the plus 3, there becomes what? Negative 3. What's 20 minus 3? 17. So I tend to like this method better than the other method. Why? As the problem gets bigger, and I'll give you one in a minute. Give you a chance to write.
as the problem gets bigger, like this. X, or let's say 3x plus 1 half equals 2x plus 1 fifth. Remember what the goal is. Here we go. This is my goal. I want all the x's on one side, doesn't matter which side, and I want the numbers on the opposite side. I'm always going to try to do that. So to accomplish this goal, I can do that by moving two things. I can take the plus one half to this side, and I take the 2x to this side. The ones I'm not moving, I'm not going to change them. There's the 3x. I'm not moving that. When I bring that 2x to this side, change side, change sign. What's the sign of 2x right now? Positive. So good. When you bring it to this side, it becomes what? Negative, Negative 2x. The 1 over 5, I'm not moving. That's a plus 1 over 5. Leave it alone. When you take the plus 1 half to that side, I'm changing side. It will change to what? Negative, Negative 1 half. What's 3x minus 2x? X. x or 1x. Very good. And now it's going to do the math. What's 1 half? I mean 1 fifth minus 1 half. I've got to find the common denominator, which is 10. I have to multiply this by 2 to make it 10. I got to multiply the top by 2. What's 2 times 1? 2. I need to multiply this by 5 to make it 10. I got to multiply the top by 5. So what's x equal to? 2 minus 5, which is what? Negative, right? Negative 3 tenths. Again, the key, all the x's on one side, all the numbers on the opposite side. The other key is making sure you have 1x, not 2x. 1x. Now, you might say, what do I use equation like this? Uh, here's an example. Let's say you want to rent a U-Haul. You're going to be moving this weekend. And you put aside a budget. You go, you know what? I got 150 bucks to move me this weekend. That's it. That's all I have. I can't exceed that. So you go to Taylor Rental because I like to rent a truck. They go, well, here's what we charge you. I mean, how, for how long you want to go? I want it for one day. They said, the deal is we're going to charge you $20 per day. That's flat fee. Plus 10 cents per mile. So you get a flat fee, which is Twenty dollars. It doesn't matter if you take that truck out of the parking lot or not. If you rent that truck from them and you leave it on their driveway or their parking lot, you still got to pay them 20 bucks for that day. Then the minute you start driving it, it's 20 cents for every mile. And the question is, how many miles can you drive that truck without going over the 150? We go, the cost for me to rent the truck is going to be the $20, that's the flat cost, I got to pay that, plus 10 cents per mile. That's 10 cents, that's $0.10 times X, the number of miles. That should equal to what? 150. Now, to solve for x, I need to subtract 20 from both sides. Gone. Or take the 20 there, change side, change sign. And 0 0.10 or 0 0.1, I don't need to write the 0. x equals what? What's 150 minus 20? 130. Now, we didn't cover this yet. I just looked at the book. That's next section. When this number is different than 1, how do you solve it? When you have a multiplication, guess what the opposite to multiplication is? 
division. You want to divide this side by 0.1 to make it a 1x. If you divide this side by 0.1, you better divide this side by 0.1. So what's x equal to? 130 divided by 0.1. You can't divide by 0.1. If you're dividing that number on the bottom, it better be a whole number. So what do you do? You move the decimal point one place to the right. And if you move this one place to the right, you better move this one place to the right. That becomes what? 1300 divided by one. What's 1300 over one? So you can drive that truck 1300 miles with 150 bucks. So you can go all the way to Washington DC, drop the stuff, come back, and you're probably still good. You will, you will be good. It's only 400 miles from here to Washington DC.